Hey church, thanks for joining me today for our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time. I want to thank James uh, for continuing our study last week and be praying for him. He's away for a couple of days this week catching his breath. Thanks for praying for me. My family uh, went out of town just a couple of days last week. I uh, got to see some family, be a help to my mother-in-law, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to step away for a few days to uh, help my family. Thank you for your prayers, and I know many of you do pray for us. Uh, continue to keep the Wild family in prayer. Uh, in a little over uh, a week, or just about a week from today, they'll be taking off for this new uh, chapter in their life and ministry. So. They are uh, uh, the, the family that we're praying for this week, so please keep them in prayer. I know you enjoyed seeing them uh, this past Sunday. And then check the email. Make sure that uh, you're getting the updated prayer list and be praying for folks. Uh, we need to do that uh, as much as we can. Uh, prayer is our, our weapon. Prayer is our encouragement. And uh, I want to encourage you to, to be faithful to pray. The weather is getting warmer. The sun is shining. We thank God for that. We look forward to a great spring. I uh, hope you're here Sunday. We'll have some folks joining the church. Baptism on April 28th, uh, as well as an informative meeting first quarter. We'll kind of just update you on how the church is doing. Uh, but looking forward to a great spring, and then summer will be upon us. So uh, if you need anything, reach out, and just know that uh, we're doing life together as a church, and I'm thankful for each of you. Pass this uh, uh video along and let it be an encouragement and uh, let's just continue to grow in the Lord together. We're talking about faith and so we're back in the, the chapter of faith or the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and last week James uh, really walked us through verses 8 through 12, Abraham and, and Sarah, which is great. And so I want to continue. Uh, it, it's really kind of a summary, almost a, a time uh, in, in, in verses really 13 through 16. Kind of we can catch our breath. So hey, here's what faith is, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so uh, I think we kind of understand the concept of faith, and I think we all understand the, the difficulties of faith. And, uh, in, in, and he reminds us, well, here's some, some people from whom you can learn. Uh, you, you've got people like Abel, and you've got people like Enoch, and, and people like Noah, and Abraham, and Sarah, and men and women like you and like me. And so uh, he, he gives us this summary then, verse 13, these all died in faith. Now, he has just spoken um, specifically about Abraham, and then he would mention Isaac and Jacob in verse 9. But all of these folks, of course, Enoch's the exception, he was taken by God, but um, death was a reality for all of them just like death will be a reality for you and for me. And we know that. There's no way around that. And so as we go through life, we're told to walk by faith. And we look around and we know that in many ways, humanly speaking, um, we're, we're limited as, as far as our time. And we know that life is like a vapor and we are not to boast of tomorrow. And so we look around and then and we know life is short and then various uh, variables enter the equation, health and circumstances and all these things start to attack ultimately our faith. And one uh, absolute necessity as we think about being men and women who live by faith is that we must learn to wait and faith and waiting uh, go hand in hand. They are bookends, to be honest, in the Christian life. And when you read about these great men and women, if you would read with the um, uh, intention of, of finding this, I believe you'd see this principle be true, but all these men and women also had periods of time in their life where they had to wait. They had to wait as they saw things happening. They had to, to wait for, for God to deliver. They had to wait for God's promises. And uh, faith is required to help us to wait. Now, none of us like to wait. And that's uh, part of human nature. And I think we, we understand that. But uh, it yet is a necessity. Um, it's reality. And the truth is that for our sanctification and for God's honor and glory, 
he demands so we wait you know think of david when he states in in psalm 27 um, in verse 14 wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait i say on the lord uh, and you say boy that's really hard verse 13 he says uh, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So uh, what kept me going is I had faith. I believed that's what helped me to wait. Um, you see that over and over and over again in the Bible. And so here the, the, the author or the writer says, verse 13, all these died in their faith, not having received the promises. Wait, wait a minute. What, what do you mean? They did not see the fulfillment of the promises. And we're told they saw them afar off. So God gave to them uh, the, the promises. He told them what was going to happen. Let's think specifically about the grouping that um, we just learned about, Abraham and Sarah. And then we'll get into them in weeks to come. But they are mentioned, Isaac and Jacob. I mean, these, these folks, you know, we think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what promise? Well, that uh, you will uh, see uh, a son be born. Okay, they saw that promise come to fruition, but from you, uh, you'll have a, a people, a, a descendancy that will be more than the stars in the sky and the sand of the seashore. They didn't really get to see that, uh, well, that you will uh, enter into uh, a land that will be yours called the promised land. They did not get to experience that per se. You'll remember, as we learned last week, Abraham was called by God to leave Ur the Chaldees, a uh, very fluent but idol-worshiping place. And he, he was a believer in God and, and go to a place and I'll tell you where to stop. So he arrives in what would today be Canaan or the promised land. But what you notice is that he and then Isaac and then and Jacob uh, all referred to themselves as being strangers and pilgrims, that this was not their home. As a matter of fact, when Abraham and Isaac and Jacob died, all of them, uh, they had really nothing uh, of land property in their name. Uh, I mean, they had the grave where they were buried, but other than that, they lived in tents. And then you'll, you'll remember that uh, all the descendants of Jacob moved to Egypt, and there they're enslaved for over 400 years. But then what will happen, God will uh, dramatically and supernaturally lead them out of Egypt to the promised land. But they didn't get to see that uh, it come to fruition, but they were given the promise. You know, God has given to us so many promises. So we know death's going to come. Life is, is temporal and it's short. We're told that we're to wait on some things and that it requires faith. But we are given promises from God, just like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were. Uh, and there may be some things in our life that God has promised that we might not see this side of heaven. But God will keep his promises. And notice uh, here, they saw them but afar off, meaning... It, it was as if it it had happened, and that's again what demonstrated or revealed their faith. But it it was from a distance. We're going to get a land. Our our offspring will um, be blessed by God. That we will be a people whom God uses. And notice when they were given this promise, I want you to notice uh, their response. They had this bold assurance. Notice, they were persuaded of them. I mean, that meant they had confidence. They were convinced, not because it happened, okay, but because of uh, who had given them the promise, the authority behind it. You know, for so many of us, we don't believe it till we see it. We're, we're Thomases, but uh, they had grown to a place in their walk of faith where God if it, if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, and I, I'm just going to keep waiting, but I believe, I have assurance, they were persuaded, they were convinced. Uh, is that your response to the promises of God? Remember, Moses would say that there had not failed one word of all those good promise. Uh, God will keep his promises. Having a, uh, if you will, a promise from God is of more certainty 
than to be given a blank check written by, uh, by a billionaire to you. I mean, God will keep his word. Um, he is bound by it. They were persuaded, and notice they embraced them. Not only were they convinced that these promises were going to be fulfilled, but if, if you will, if you can envision, they wrapped their arms around it. They held on to it. I mean, they, they, uh, they would not let go. By the way, that's what kept them going day after day after day. They embraced them, and then they confessed them. I mean, they, they shared it. They weren't ashamed of it. God's going to give us this land. God's going to bless our descendants. God is going to do something great through our family. And they confessed it. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. Meaning that, look, God's going to do something amazing here. And then, as we see, they were even given those promises that there was something even better yet to come. And their conclusion, as it was fleshed out uh, in, in their, their attitude, uh, they had a believing attitude of faith. They were boldly assured that this would happen. They, uh, they knew that God would keep his promises, and it affected not only their words, but it affected their actions. Verse 14, they uh, very clearly declared that they sought a country. So, okay, God, we believe it so much that um, we're telling everybody that this is not our home, that it may not be the right time. We know you're going to give us a land. You're going to give us a promised land here. And we look forward to that day. Even in their, their time in, in living in a tent, um, they knew that the day would come when God would give th their descendants this land as their promised land. You know, think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There were two symbols that seemed to represent them, a tent and an altar. The tent really signified that this was temporary. We're moving around. It's not ours yet. And But the altar, that they had great faith. We're trusting God. We're, we're, we're believing in Him. And so even though this wasn't their home, their promised land yet, we believe that it will be. And they proclaimed it, and it was evident in the way they lived their life. Notice in verse 15, because uh, truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, then they might have had opportunity to return. If they didn't believe, then they would have been like most of us. They would have stopped. They would have thought back and, and thought, wow, why am I living in a tent here in this land, hoping and believing in, in, in some future um, promise that that may or may not ever happen. They could have just returned back home. They could have gone back to the Ur of the Chaldees. But you, you see that there was resolve that we're never going back. We are walking with God. We are believing. We are trusting him to give us a home. And by the way, the temporal promised land is a great picture of the heavenly promised land one day. So they were told, hey, there will be a time when you will have this home, this country. And by the way, you know, Nate, Israel's under such attack right now. And again, that's not necessarily anything new, but um, it, it becomes more publicized uh, various times, of course, throughout history. And yet you and I have to be reminded that God promised that land to, to his people. And he made that promise all the way back to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. And though they didn't see uh, it to fruition, they believed it and they held on to it. And, and that got them through every single day. And you saw that they believed it because not only in their words, but in the way they lived their life, they cut ties, as it were, with their old lifestyle. Remember when Abraham is old and he tells his servant, go find a wife for my son. And he tells him, do not, do not go back to Ur, the Chaldees. You can't do that. You don't take Isaac with you, not at all, because our home is here. God is going to do something here. Go find a wife from our our family, but don't take him back. We're, we're, we're no turning back. And, and you see that, that resolve. You see uh, that they uh, had this attitude that um, we're going to just wait on the Lord. He's going to do it. He's going to fulfill his promises. And what a great reminder. Um, you know, think about this past week, we had the uh, the eclipse, the total solar eclipse, and uh, I, I think many of you got to see uh, 
some of that and I was blessed. I was in Ohio. Uh, I flew out Sunday night um, and got to be with my family for a day there and they happened to be in the the, the line of total uh, uh, um, in, in the total eclipse, uh, which was great. And um, so we got the glasses and we got to see it all. And uh, it, it was 100% uh, totality, which was really uh, an amazing thing to be able to see. It got cool and dark. And so it was awesome. But, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks, um, you know, meteorologists and uh, scientists all have this capability with all the technology we have to tell us it's coming, it's coming, this is going to happen. 2017 was the last time that we had a total uh, eclipse that passed over the contiguous United States. And we know that the next one that will be in the, the lower 48 will be in August of 2044. And so they have these uh, abilities to predict now. And uh, and we say, okay, but that's science, or we have, uh, you know, a, um, a, a historical kind of record, and yet we still have to believe. And like James mentioned last week, our belief is only as strong as the object of our belief or the object of our faith. And what God wants us to understand is, look, um, if you're trusting in science, you're trusting in meteorologists, and, um, you know, that's great, but understand who is it that made all these things. And if you... Sh Trust in anybody in your life should be able to trust in God. And here you had guys like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who just trusted. And they had such assurance that God's going to give us a land. He's going to give us a home. And, uh, and they were bold about it. And it affected their attitude and the way they lived their life. And I want you to see that they were rewarded for their faith. They experienced this really, this... A great blessed achievement in their life. You say, what was it? If you notice, in verse 16, so, but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. So they desired this land to call their own, but they were given uh, information. They were privy to the promises that there's even a better country than even this promised land that flowed with milk and honey. There was a heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. They made their decision. They trusted. They were all in. It's going to happen. And we will wait. And we will wait. And they got to see some of God's promises fulfilled on this side of, of heaven. But the others, they never got to physically experience, but they saw them come to fruition. They saw... Uh, the children of Israel enter into this promised land. They see even to this day how God protects the Jewish people, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They see it fulfilled. But at the time of their life, God honored them because of their faith. They looked ahead and believed. And God said, you know what? I am not ashamed to be called their God. Wow, what a statement. I am willing to to have my name um, attached to theirs. How many times did God describe in the scriptures, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He was not ashamed to, to have their name attached with his. Uh, and what an honor. Um, God honored them. They're listed here in the hall of faith because they believed. And not only that, he hath prepared for them a city. When they died, Though they didn't see their the promise of entering into Canaan as being their land, they entered into that heavenly city. And uh, I, I promise you that they weren't disappointed. God had already prepared a place. The word prepared in the Greek is written in aorist tense, which means it's, it's past, it's already been done. And you know, when Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, he's working and preparing. He has places prepared already and when the last place is prepared for the last person for whom it needs to be prepared he's coming to get us and they were honored they were rewarded because of their faith and it reminds us death's reality we all have to wait but what are we doing with the promises of god and are we embracing them, holding on to them? Are we just absolutely convinced that what God said he would do in our life? 
And do we just live in such a way that it affects our attitude? It affects the way we live and the words that we speak. We have such assurance that God's going to come through. God's going to do what he said he would do. And if I don't see it in this lifetime, I'm going to see it on the other side. There's a heavenly city waiting for me. Do, do we understand that the best is yet to come? Do we understand we're strangers, we're pilgrims? A stranger means that that we're away from our home. Uh, pilgrim means that we're going home. This world is not our home. And so as we live and speak, and we do so by faith, holding on to God's promises, it should be evident to everybody that this is not our world. This isn't our home. Um, but we know we have a home. So until then, we're working, working, working knowing that one day we're going home and it should uh, be evident not only in our own lives but to everybody that sees us how do you how do i live in accordance to the promises of god am i learning to wait by faith and if i'll do that uh, i'll be honored god god will bless me and uh, god desires that of us and, and may God help us to hold on to his promises like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, because he's good for them. He'll keep those promises for sure. Uh, uh, let's pray tonight. I hope that'll be an encouragement. Whatever those promises are that, that you, you're claiming in your life, hold on to them and uh, trust the Lord for them. And let it change the way you live. And most of all, know that one day you're going to be with him and uh, what a day that will be. And let that be an encouragement to you and me each and every day of our life. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you for our time. Thank you for your promises that, Lord, they're bound by your word. And we're grateful for that. I pray, Lord, that we'll be men and women who wait. We'll be men and women who have such assurance in our life, Lord, that it'll affect our attitudes, that we'll have believing attitudes and, and, and believing actions. And we'll live in such a way, Lord, that it is obvious we have no desire to go back to this world. We have no desire to run back to the things that, that once consumed us because, uh, Lord, we're living for something better. And we're looking for that heavenly home, that heavenly city. And, Lord, I pray that we would be found faithful, that we'd be men and women that you're not ashamed of. And, Lord, thank you. You're preparing a place for us. I pray that you would help our faith to be challenged. Help us to trust in you, Lord. Uh, we pray. So bless us the rest of this week, Lord. Bring us back together Sunday, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week. Hold on to those promises of God. And God will, we'll see you Sunday.